This is a story of how a Kickstarter campaign created a product that turned into a $50 billion company that today has lost 95% of its value from its all-time highs. We're talking about Peloton. Peloton, come on, let's get this workout started. The idea seemed silly at first, if not just outright obvious. Selling a bike with an iPad also that people could train from home and feel like they're part of a fitness class. But then this pandemic hit and people were stuck at home and wanted an alternative to the gym. The stock went nuts as people quickly turned to home exercise solutions and Peloton became the McDonald's of home exercise equipment. By Q4 of 2021, they hit over a billion dollars in quarterly revenue, seeing subscription revenue boom 140% between 2020 to 2021. Yet the company never really made any money and it didn't matter. Wall Street loved the top line revenue growth and believed that operating leverage would open up rapidly as they continued with their extreme growth. But by 2022, gyms started opening up again, yet the company had spent massive amounts of money ramping up their supply chain just as people realized they didn't need their Peloton machine. And suddenly, the stock lost 95% of its value. Today, we're diving into the story of Peloton. Peloton? Peloton's genesis can be traced back to John Foley, who was an enthusiast of instructor-led fitness classes and realized that after becoming a parent, it was increasingly difficult for him to attend these classes. The inspiration to bring the excitement and energy of these classes to the comfort of one's home led Foley to envision Peloton. He imagined Peloton as a platform that could offer immersive instructor-led fitness classes that could be attended remotely through high-end bikes equipped with screens, leading to the first prototype in 2013, which was launched through a Kickstarter campaign. Well, the product was rudimentary, the Kickstarter campaign was a success, enabling consumers to reserve an early edition for as little as $1,500. The campaign saw a total of 297 backers support the company, raising gross proceeds of over $307,000, which surpassed the $250,000 goal. But this was just the beginning. The Kickstarter was enough to give Peloton the boost it needed to begin manufacturing its product. A year later, it was followed by a $10.5 million Series B funding that was pivotal in refining the bike's design for consumers. The company initiated selling bikes at a modest pace. However, a key challenge that emerged was the efficient and speedy delivery of bikes to customers. But this was the mid-2010s and money was cheap. So how do you fix a problem? Well, you go back to the equity markets. Peloton raised $30 million in a Series C funding, which allowed the company to establish retail locations and expedite bike production. Peloton, meanwhile, resorted to an innovative solution of hiring delivery personnel to transport bikes directly to consumers. Peloton's growth trajectory was remarkable. In 2017, it became a unicorn, crossing the $1 billion valuation mark. A year later, this valuation quadrupled after securing a massive $550 million new round of funding. The company became an overnight success, selling over 400,000 bikes by 2018. The sales model included a $39 per month subscription fee to an app that streamed exercise classes directly to the user's home, garnering Peloton a dedicated and fervent upper middle class user base. The company reported that it had a retention rate of 95% for its connected fitness subscriptions, which the company regarded as engaging to the point of addictive. The success led to the launch of the Peloton Tread, and get this, this treadmill would go for $4,300. By September 2019, Peloton was public with the company conducting its IPO with a valuation of $7.7 .7 billion. And then a pandemic hit. The COVID-19 pandemic spurred a seismic shift in Peloton's business as stay-at-home measures propelled demand for home fitness solutions. With gyms shut down, individuals pivoted to home workouts, turning Peloton into a household name. However, the sudden boom in demand presented significant supply chain challenges. Customers faced long delivery waiting times and Peloton struggled to keep up. In a bid to augment production capacity and reduce delivery times, Peloton acquired fitness company Precore for $420 million in December of 2020. This was shortly after unveiling Peloton's newly designed Bike Plus and Tread. The Bike Plus had a slightly larger touchscreen and a better sound system. In an effort to capture a wider range of consumers, the company continued to sell its first generation products at slightly different price points. 
By the end of 2020, over 1.7 million households had Peloton equipment, with 1.6 million members having a connected fitness subscription. This allowed Peloton's revenue to grow 140% to $3 billion that year. This growth did not go unnoticed. Investors wanted a piece of the pie and no price was too high for Peloton. The stock IPO to $29 in 2019, but got all the way up to $170, an insane 440% increase in just under two years, valuing the company at an eye-popping $50 billion. Despite the growth, demand didn't stop, likely due to all the free money that was floating around in the economy. As Peloton continued to struggle with inventory, they announced plans to build a $400 million state-of-the-art manufacturing facility, Peloton Output Park in Troy Township, Ohio. Alongside ramping up production, Peloton strived to expedite deliveries by allowing an additional $100 million to airship products, a move that was internally regarded as contentious. Management expected demand to last for years. Six months later, though, things started to suddenly slow. The first set of vaccines started to roll out and companies were eager to reopen their doors to customers. A life-saving vaccine and a symbolic shot in the arm Americans desperately need. This was evident in the company's monthly subscriber churn, which went from 0.3% of the total subscribers during the early days of the pandemic, all the way up to 1.4% monthly churn during the summer of 2022. This was a major shift in consumer demand for Peloton and one they were not used to. The company began slashing prices to spur demand, dropping the price of its first generation equipment by an additional 20%. The decision was indicative of the company's effort to remain competitive as gyms reopened and the post-pandemic world began to take shape. Amidst the operational whirlwind, the company's financial health experienced a roller coaster. Despite a meteoric rise in revenue with sales exceeding $4 billion by the end of 2021, net losses climbed to over $1.1 billion, despite its subscriber base climbing to over 2.8 million consumers. This financial turbulence did not deter extravagant expenditures. For instance, Peloton CEO John Foley purchased a $55 million piece of real estate in the Hamptons. This beautiful house is located near the beach and faces the water with more than 400 feet of water frontage. Not to mention the location, which is on Further Lane, one of the best streets in the Hamptons and making him neighbors to the likes of Jerry Seinfeld, Lauren Michaels, Carl Icahn, and Howard Schultz. As we stepped into 2022 and the pandemic began to subside, Peloton experienced a significant reduction in consumer demand for its connected fitness equipment. The $420 million acquisition of Precore two years earlier proved to be all for naught when in an attempt to control cost, Peloton decided to temporarily halt the production of its bikes and treadmills. Production of the Bike Plus was halted for seven months while the original and cheaper bike saw a two month halt. Not long after, Peloton announced it would be cutting 2,800 jobs in an attempt to address mounting financial strain. And that facility in Ohio, with not enough demand at current production levels, the plan for an additional manufacturing facility was scrapped entirely. And of course, as is customary with all sinking ships, management was shaken up. CEO and co-founder John Foley moved to the executive chair role, while former Spotify CFO Barry McCarthy would be taking the helm to attempt to right the ship. But a new face of the company doesn't mean the challenges suddenly end. Peloton faced inflation and supply chain issues, which forced them to hike the price of their flagship bike. This was short-lived, however, when in an attempt to stimulate sales, Peloton reduced the price of its original bike for the third time in a year and its higher-end Bike Plus for the first time. To combat the expected revenue hit, the company increased its monthly subscription fee for the first time in eight years. But the damage was already done. Searching any online secondhand shop like eBay would turn up hundreds of listings for Peloton bikes at much more reasonable prices. In fact, it got so bad that Peloton partnered with eBay to launch a certified refurbished program that offered bikes for a $500 discount from MSRP. Meanwhile, the company was seeing its products gather dust in warehouses as inventories ballooned to over $1.5 billion. Now, that's a lot of $4,000 treadmills. The repercussions of these missteps were severe. Peloton's revenues dropped from $4 billion in 2021 to $3 billion in 2022, and losses ballooned to $2.8 billion. The stock also took a nosedive. Once boasting a $50 billion valuation, the company ended 2022, valued at just $11 billion. The former CEO, John Foley, also felt personal repercussions as he listed his $55 million Hamptons mansion at what would be a loss 
purchase just a year earlier, a symbol of the financial toll that Peloton's downfall had taken on him. The repercussions for John Foley were just monetary, but consumers sometimes face something far more severe. In March 2021, a devastating incident involving Peloton's Tread Plus treadmill came to light in which a six-year-old child lost their life after getting entrapped in the treadmill. The tragedy was only the tip of the iceberg. An urgent safety warning from Peloton after a child tragically died in an accident involving the company's Tread Plus machine. By this time, Peloton had already received over 150 reports concerning the Tread Plus defects, with incidents including individuals, pets, and objects being pulled under the rear of the treadmill. Eventually, the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission revealed that Peloton had knowledge of these issues as early as December 2018, but did not report them promptly. As part of a settlement with the CPSC, Peloton agreed to pay a $19 million civil penalty for failing to report the defects and for distributing recalled treadmills. The subsequent recall of the Tread Plus treadmill affected approximately 125,000 units, which was effectively all of the Tread Pluses sold to date. It was brought about by the mounting evidence of the product's risks, including abrasions, fractures, and even death. So let's wrap it up. Now, if Peloton were a human, it'd be that person who won the lottery, went berserk buying yachts and gold-plated toothbrushes, and then wondered why they broke a year later. Like a fitness fad diet, Peloton went from the McDonald's of home gyms to the leftover stale fries under your car seat. Now, it's not like they didn't see the treadmill train wreck coming, but when you're doing lunges on a golden treadmill in the Hamptons, it's hard to notice the cliff you're lunging towards. It's like Peloton CEO John Foley bought a mansion next to Jerry Seinfeld and then had a real-life episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm, but far less funny and still a comedy of errors that made the stock price whimper. To be fair, the idea was brilliant. Make fitness addictive and bring the gym home. Of course, COVID made it an opportunity of a lifetime. But then gyms eventually opened back up and people wanted to actually leave their houses. Peloton seemed to think their hyper growth would extend well past COVID and they needed to ramp up like the growth would never end. Today they can't give away Pelotons and people are happy to go back to the classes where they connect in real life with people in person. It's not to say Peloton doesn't make sense for some people, it's just no longer a hyper growth story worth $50 billion. The lesson here for young companies is simple. Don't sprint on a treadmill thinking you're running a marathon. All right, everybody, thank you for watching. If you can let me know what you think in the comment section. Do you have a Peloton? Have you ever owned Peloton stock? Do you think that it's actually an opportunity here with how much the stock has drawn down? So guys, we just recently launched this channel and we noticed that 99.9% .9 of our viewers are not subscribed. So if you enjoyed this video, we need your help in growing this channel. By subscribing, that would help us keep the lights on and make sure that our crews have jobs in these uncertain times. So please hit that subscribe button and we promise to make more quality videos that I'm sure you're gonna love. I love you all.